Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Clement Monavella and I'm back again with another video after seven months of not creating content for you guys. It's been a long time, I know. Seven months. Like it's literally been almost the entire year. The last time I uploaded con content was literally in February. But right now, I promise you guys I'm going to be consistent. Oh! <laughs> Oh, so cool. I'm gonna be consistent. Yes, I'm gonna be consistent. So let me tell you the reason why I was not uploading any videos. So I did not have like time to shoot videos because I was working at a school. You know, it was seven to two to two, and get home, cook, and whatsoever. And the data was not very accessible. Like I have to be honest. So now everything is well, everything is going very well. So yeah. Anyway, that's not what the video is about. I can do you I can do a, a um, separate video where I update you about everything that has been happening in my life if you want to. If you don't want to so far, I don't feel you guys. I'm just kidding. Hey, thank you so much for three hundred subscribers. And from here we are going to thousand subscribers, right? From thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand, hundred thousand, one million, one million, two million. Well, I don't know when you get that after 84 years, maybe. But, yeah, we're still gonna get there. So, now, on today's video, I am going to be um, reacting to the most, um, yo, I know, dirtiest confessions I've ever seen online. Ever. Like, ever. So, because, yo, what's up in my mouth? Sorry, guys. So, because, you know, like, um... I don't have a lot of following on Instagram, on Twitter, and whatsoever. So I chose to go to one of the most freakiest um, confessions page on Instagram. It's called the UCT Just Confessing. Um, so I'm going to be checking out some of the confessions from there. And I'm probably I'm going to put them somewhere here in the video. You know, you'll just find them anyway in the video. I don't know where, but anyway here. So... Now, let me get to the first one. But before I get into the video... Ooh, I was just shaking. But before I get into the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, you know, and do the things. That... that, that, that yeah, so cool. Go ahead and so now, the first one here, it says... Um, I had a phone at quite an early age. Fourth grade. Grade four. Why well, say fourth grade, guys? I mean, I... You tell me... Um, who actor is American? Why not say grade four? Okay, I got my uh, phone at quite early age, um, fourth grade. The kids I grew up with were a year or two older than me, and they knew way more than I did. So, sides to get um explicit images, explicit games, and all the things an eleven year old shouldn't be access to. I started watching porn at a relatively young age and it became a habit. And here I am, 10 years later, still watching porn whenever I feel sad. A Han who was really hard, had when UCT blocked access to all explicit sites. So, okay, so now, I don't know what to say. Um, so, you know, with pornography. I feel like we are being exposed to pornography at an early age. Like, literally everyone has been exposed to pornography at an early age. Well, I was exposed to pornography at an early age. I just don't remember when, but I think when I was in grade 7 or grade 8, I think. And I was like 12, 18 at that time. And that's when I got exposed to pornography at that time. Because, you know, we have phones at a, at, a, at a young age and our parents didn't know better about blocking, you know, explicit sites and whatsoever, you know. So I think what you should do, you know, should try to get, you know, away from, from this habit of yours of watching porn. If you want to get over it, just try to find a different hobby that you can do, you know, try to have sweets. Every time if you feel like watching porn, eat a sweet. I'm telling you, it'll go away. Yo, I suck at giving advice, guys. I don't know. <laughs> Yo, Scott. So now let us get into the second one. So guys, don't mind me looking down. I'm looking on my laptop, right? So don't mind me and looking down. So the first one is say, Man, my sneaky link isn't doing the things that I'm needing him to do. I'm even considering hitting up my previous sneaky link 
and he's a massive asshole. Yo, it's been tough out here. Girl, don't go back to the asshole. Like, look forward, not backwards. You know, as Anders Bank would say, moving forward. The old one, though, because now it's, what? I don't know. But the old one would say, moving forward. Move forward, don't go back. Going back, you know, it's just a lot, you know, a lot. You're causing yourself a lot of hurt, a lot of unnecessary stress, unnecessary shit. So just move forward, don't go back. Ria, kopeli, hi, kumrao. Lankutamus. Oh. Um, the third one says, recently lost the V-Card last year via a hookup with a friend and although the experience was great, consensual and satisfying for the both of us, for some reasons I felt guilty after. I would um, always dreamt of having a committed relationship, but whenever I tried, it, I came up short. For years I felt like no girl would invest in me no matter how much I tried to improve myself or bring to the table, bring myself to the table. Um, I still do. After all the effort and progress I made trying to become a better version of myself and a better man, I wanted to be special. Then she came along and what was supposed to be a fun hangout turned X-rated. As a guy, I feel a lot of pressure from both sexes to be experienced and that's compounding. What the loneliness made me, um, what made me give in, I think I don't, I don't regret the experience or her. I regret that it wasn't with a girl I loved. I kept on bra. Yeah, guys. Mm, it's a lot. I relate to this though. I relate because I'm still a virgin. Yes, I'm still a virgin. Um, so, what I can say is, um, I think um, social pressure was getting to you and you just chose to lose your virginity because what? Friends are having sex and they say it's nice. You know, and you wanted to feel whatever the friends are feeling, and you just said, okay, I'm going to have sex, and, you know, love can come after. So, I believe, like, having sex with somebody who is committed with you, somebody who will love you, you will not regret it after. Like, you will not regret it after. You will even enjoy those, you, you know, you will you will even daydream about it. Like, have some flashbacks, if, if possible. But losing your virginity to someone that's not even your boyfriend or your girlfriend or whoever, you know, it's just someone you know and you have sex with it. I mean, imagine having sex with someone that you just know for the first time. Like, it won't feel um, intimate as it should be. I mean, sex is an intimate thing. It should be intimate. It should be, it should involve emotions. There should be emotions involved. Not to say... You just have sex with someone because you know them and because you want to have sex with them. Um, so this one it says, I told my girl that I want to be poly poly polyamorous. I tried the monogamy thing with her. Oh, so cool. I tried the monogamy, the monogamy thing for her sake, but not being able to leave and be accepted for who I am. For who I really am was eating me up. It took a lot, a lot of for me to admit this to her, and I absolutely regret it. We broke up because she says that I want. I broke her heart, and what I said is emotionally blackmail. How I gave her honesty because I love her. I, uh, I love her, and didn't want to cheat. But she was too jealous and and insecure to see that she made me feel shameful about my needs and desires even though i always treated her well and with respect i guess this is what i get for telling the oh sorry, for telling the truth anonza so anonymous um it's great that you express your needs to your partner and while their reaction may not have been what you've always wanted i think it's 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 good because you were honest. You know, you are honest with her in the first place that you want this type of a relationship. And even though she may have seen it as emotional blackmail or something, but it's better because you put it in the table and tell her told her that you want a polyamorous relationship. And uh, yeah, I do commend you for that. I do. I really do. I feel like I should do like a, a, a um like um a segment where i say 
advice with Clement. Advice with Clement. When we have tea, I gave you advice on everything that you guys are going through. Hmm. We'll definitely think about it. So now we are moving on to the next one. I have to get an abortion. And I feel like I need to get it off my chest. I'm not really feeling emotionally about it, but I, it's still eating me up a little, a little like, a little like uh, how wow I was really irresponsible, um, not generally a statement for all, for all who need them, but I actually was irresponsible, and now my period is almost two weeks late, and I need to go to to clicks. Wow, I think there's no emotional processing going on right now it's just returning an event and a wild event and what wild events they are not a mother girl fetus deletus fetus deletus delete remove you know hey girl back to the sender back to where it come from mama you don't deserve it if you feel like you don't want the child back to the sender Back to the sender. Fetus, delete us. Remove that thing from your system. Oh, that thing. Yes, it's a thing. Because it's not a baby. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So this one says, My boyfriend and I have been dating for almost a year now. We've been incredibly happy together, but I've always been bothered by one thing. I'm never satisfied with just a singular partner. I've only cheated once in a span of six years. However, I cheated for the second time a few nights ago. As I write this... Okay. What? what am I saying? Um, we are both sober and of right mind and only made out um, throughout the night. No funny business. Should one not feel guilty about this? Because I don't, despite the circumstances, the way I know I don't feel guilty that it felt right was that I saw my boyfriend following the following day and no feelings had changed. I still wanted to marry the man. The reason I've written and sent out this confession is because I would like criticism or validation on my feelings and of possible polyamory. I have no qualms about him seeing other people and I've told him this, but he's, strict, he's strictly monogamous and I feel like one of us is going to get hurt really badly. He's such an angel and hurting or losing him is the last thing I want. Wow. So, um, what else I, I would really advise Ananda to do on this one is, okay, I think you've spelled it out yourself, like, you want a polyamorous relationship and he wants um, a monogamous relationship. So, I think, I don't think the two can coexist really. So, what you should do, just leave the guy, leave the man, and just move on with your life. Hopefully, you'll find someone who's looking to have the kind of relationship that you want i mean as much as you, as you love him and as much as as you you really care for him but cheating on him it's not a really good thing because you're cheating on him and the next thing you are going to feel guilty about it because it happened so i think it's better you just move on like move on this just move on from the guy move on from everything and just focus on yourself like focusing on yourself is the most beautiful thing um okay so this one it says Come on her face, be a gentleman, and clean her up by licking it off on, on her face. Uh, what? What? Uh, okay. Um. This is the most scariest thing I've ever read. What did I just read? What in the Fifty Shades of Grey is this? What in the... What is Dima? What about your integrity? Ah, Sana. Yo? Okay. Yo, let's go on to the, to the last, to the last, one. last one. The last one it says, So the other year I met a girl on campus. Didn't talk much but told her that I thought she was cute or something and I gave her my number. To my surprise, she texted me a few days later. We had a brief WhatsApp exchange over a day or two before she ghosted me. There was no explanation and I didn't expect it since I've never been ghosted before. Nor had a girl ever shown any reciprocation to my interest before. So this 
So even though it, it shouldn't have been a big deal, it had a lot. I wanted to know why, or at least for her to tell me it wasn't going to work in order to get some form of closure. My head filled with self-doubt in the absence of either. After some time, I moved on and entered into a long-term relationship. But now that we are back to regular proceedings on campus, I've started seeing this girl frequently in my chosen study space. I thought I was over this, but every time I see her, I feel pangs of anger, sadness, and even some um, of that self-doubt. Part of me wants someone to hurt her in the same way she hurt me. How do I get over this? No other study space is nearly as optimal for me. And besides, avoiding her would just remind me of her and those undesirable feelings. So, um, I think, um, so as someone who has been ghosted before, Ghosted by someone I've known for literally years, a decade and years. Um, I think you are making it a big deal because it has only been a few days, not years, months, or weeks, or whatsoever. You're making it a big deal. It has been two months. And I feel like you are... You know, there's some sort of entitlement that you're currently doing right now. You know, don't expect people to... Two days, two days, right? two days, my, my guy, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, how uh, well Two days, and you already feel like you wanna die because of that technology. For a conversation you've had for two days, how uh, well I know, no. Like, I've lost people, a lot of people in my life. You know, people I've known for years and years and years. But here I am, still standing, even though having moved past it, but I try bit by bit. So you will come tell me about a thing of two days. Two days is nothing. Like you can just move on within two days. That's all I wanna say. Yeah. And that was Okay, so lot. thank you so much for tuning in into my video. It really means a lot to me. Like I haven't done this in such a long time and I had so much fun. So now thank you so much for tuning in. We have reached to us the end of the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and just do anything and I'll see you on the next video. Like I'll literally see you on the next video. I'm going to upload the next video next week. So thank you so much guys for tuning in. And again, thank you so much for 300 subscribers. It means a lot to me. Let us move to 1000 subscribers and beyond. Thank you so much. I love you all and have a great day or evening or Whatever time you are watching this, have a great, great time. Yeah, so cool. Bye.